Mr. Daily Gray. Just woken up to Rottweiler sick, which is not ideal. Um, today's vlog is going to be a bit different. I'm going to do um, like an overview of how to teach competition hill work, as the title suggests, instead of vlogging bits. Because I've got loads and bits of bats to do today, and there's not really a lot interesting. So we're going to have that as the majority of the video. Um, it's only going to be a very brief overview. It's not going to be super in detail, but I'll give you an idea of what's going on. I'm just about to let the Rottweiler in for Flack and Khaleesi's morning wrestle, which happens every day. After I let them out, we have a morning wrestle. This is how we start the day. Right, so as it happens, we have had a change of plan. <laughs> that change of plan being that I've just realized my van's not packed. Um, which essentially means I can't go anywhere until tomorrow because the fucking garage didn't send the logbook in time and I haven't got it. Um, so they're going to tax that for me first thing tomorrow. We'll do the heel work tomorrow. Today I want to talk about reactivity instead. So reactivity is basically, I'm going to do this in three parts. The ground, the shepherd, the rottweiler. Just because I'm going to run them all on the treadmill for a decent amount of time. So reactivity is essentially when you go out and your dog barks or kicks off at other people or other dogs or other, other somethings. That, that thing can, can be a multitude of things. Some dogs are dog reactive, some dogs are human reactive, some dogs are car reactive, small wheel reactive, you know, like bikes, scooters, things like that. It really doesn't matter what they're reactive to. You need to deal with this and you need to understand something called threshold. So threshold, go on, come on. Fresh. Spencer, by the way, is just turned eight. I like a treadmill, don't you? Threshold is the point where your dog doesn't react. So if you've got a reactive dog at X amount of meters, let's say 20, for example, it may be far further than that, it may be far closer than that. At 20 meters, for example, your dog doesn't react anymore. Um, it's a point where they can deal with the thing that's making them uneasy. And that uneasiness can be a variety of things as well. It can be aggression, it can be fear, it can be anxiety, it can be unsure on how to deal with the, stimula the stimulation when you get to it, the stimulus, sorry. Um, so you need to work below a threshold. You need to work at a distance where your dog's not not kicking off. And this is a method known as counter conditioning. So you're retraining the dog's brain that the association to that thing means X. At the moment, they're seeing when I see another dog, I get tense and aggressive. You're retraining that that being that close to another dog brings reward. So this is like a positive only way of dealing with it. Um, and we're going to talk about another way of dealing with it as well. We're going to talk about the ideal way, which is this. We're going to talk about the practical way. And then we're going to talk about the very fast way. If you're in an absolute squeeze and you're panicking like hell, you need to get sorted quick. And you need to just take this thing out. So this is the, this is the ideal way. Do it, do it slowly through counter condition. So literally, you're going, to, you're going to make engagement with your dog. And then when they're paying attention to you, but they know that the stimulus is there, mark it and reward. Do a bit of training with them. Do a little bit of heel work. Do a bit of down, sit, stand, whatever. Easy, easy training. Then you let your dog, on their own accord, move closer. That closer can be a foot. Don't try and go from 20 meters to two meters in the first day. This is a technique that takes potentially weeks to sort out. Um, potentially longer, it depends how bad your reactivity is. But that's the very brief overview. If you want to go into that more, um, there's a full video on counter conditioning and the full video on the reactivity and how to treat it in the academy. Also, overview for the other two. There's six videos, I think, on reactivity now, and a hour and a half long webinar on reactivity as well. So go give that a watch. I'm gonna finish running this dog on a treadmill, and then we're gonna get Khaleesi out and talk about the way that I deal with reactivity. Uh, don't pull my phone off, go away. And then we're gonna get Flack out and talk about the most unideal way to deal with it if you're in a massive pinch, if you're struggling big time. Right, so Flack still has the problem that he occasionally throws himself off. It just stop, stops moving completely. So I'm going to do the next phase of the reactivity video sat here with a lead on just in case he decides to throw himself off the back. So the second most ideal way of doing this is the way that I train it. It's a combination of complete idealism and practicality for speed. Kalesi, go let down. Dad. Nay, dad. Up. Ah. You need to sometimes have this blend because people have got real life. You know, like they can't just, they, they, can't, they often can't deal with, oh, it's going to take three months. It's just not how it always works. Um, so, 
I set this up with like a stew job. So basically what I'll do is I'll, I'll still work at a distance. Maybe not right at, maybe not right under threshold, but somewhere near threshold, maybe a little bit over, but not far. You don't need all going absolutely stir crazy about this. Otherwise you're going to lose. I have a dog stand completely still, usually a calm dog. I often use my shit to on my ground to start with. And then I walk the other dog past, like say at a distance. That distance might be five meters, might be 10 meters. Depends on the dog. Might be one meter, it depends on the dog. As you walk past, as soon as you see any sign of body language like this, correct the dog. That correction needs to be in, in line with, you know, how severe the reactivity is and how the dog responds to correction. Keep walking. Walk past again, correct the dog. No rewards at this point. This is only positive punishment at this point. The reward is we keep walking. The reward is I don't kick you in the face. Not literally, obviously, just a, a normal lead correction before anyone starts fucking crying. Um, as the dog starts understanding that, you walk past, mark the behavior if they ignore the dog. So mark it with the continuation marker, good. And then as you get past the dog, mark it with a reward marker, yes, feed. You keep repeating this, keep repeating this. And you move the stooge dog a little bit closer after a while and a little bit closer until you're sort of, you know, within a couple of meters of each other. And then you put that dog away and you get a more excited dog out. And you repeat the process, but you repeat it again back from the beginning. German Shepherd, why are you up? Khaleesi, da, off. She's dying to get on this treadmill. Da, off. Ah, Jesus. Now, this is one of the Mali problems. Constantly want to be fucking going. When my ground was on here, she's like trying to get on the treadmill with him. Now he's on. She's trying to get on the treadmill. Um. So you've got that bit down. If you jump off now, I've got that lead wheel going to fall out. You repeat that with a slightly more exciting dog. And you repeat with a slightly more exciting dog. A slightly more exciting dog. And you keep setting this up. And then you need the, the stooge dog to start moving as well. So you're now setting up like a normal walking scenario. Once you've set up that walking scenario, then you go out into the real world and commit to it there. Um, so that's the second way. That's the ideal way. It's how I teach it. I teach it in a conjunction with the first way. The last way I'm going to talk to you about when Khalees is on the treadmill is a way that I would never teach it unless it was absolute last fucking resort. As in, dog's on death row. The human's about to have a massive breakdown. It can't go anywhere. It's unrehomable. There's just zero chances for the dog. Then I would use this last method. So I'm going to keep running this a while now for these last... He's going to do 40 minutes, I hope. We are currently four minutes in, so we've got a fair old run to do. Um, and I will catch up with you on Khaleesi's on the treadmill for this last bit, the last the last hurrah. There he is, doing his bit. The lead, by the way, isn't tied to anything. The lead is just sat here on his box. And it's just ready for me to hold again. So I'll see you when Khaleesi comes shortly. Right, so in my opinion, this is the least advisable way of teaching activity. Um, and this... Like I say, this is only ever a massive final last resort for me. Um, I've probably used it once or twice in my entire career. Some trainers are using this all the time, and that's hey, that's their prerogative, isn't it? Um, it's just it's not for me. It's not it's not the one that I would jump to ever, unless it was an absolute last resort. And it's just through compulsion. So you're not really dealing with the psychological issues here. You're just taking that knife edge, the sharpness away. So people can start dealing with it. You know, if they're really, really struggling or they're very disabled and the dog can't be rehomed or um, there's a multitude of reasons, isn't there? But the bottom line is I need to make this very clear that you shouldn't use this unless you absolutely have to. Don't use it as a quick fix, although that's exactly. Hey, come on. That's exactly what it is. It's a quick fix. So compulsion. Every time the dog makes any noise or any sign or any vision of wanting to kick off, you correct it, and you correct it hard. Whether that be through e-collar, whether it be through pinch, whether it be through chain, whether it be through flat collar, whether it be through harness, it really doesn't matter. It depends on the dog, depends on the severity of the dog's behavior. Um, but like I say, don't, don't use it. I'm not even going to go into it in proper detail here. I'm not even going to skim over it properly. Come on. Because I don't want people thinking, oh, I'll just use that because it's the easiest way around it. Don't use it. It's a bad idea. But I wanted to address it because it's a way that some trainers will be doing it. It's a way that you can look for. You know, is this trainer suggesting this as a first resort? Probably avoid them. Um, but yeah, there's three ways to fix um, reactivity. Khaleesi is three minutes in of 45. Flex done 45. Spencer's done 45. Jack's not going on today. Um, it's important to let these two run their energy off when I can't get out. And it's important for Spencer to get the time on just because he's getting older. So... 
I am now going to dash. I'm going to finish running Khaleesi on the treadmill and uh, get to work with the office work that comes with every single night. And I will catch you all tomorrow for Daily Grey, where we will definitely do the heel work video. I say definitely, if the fucking garage ring me to fax this vehicle. Come on, hey, come on, get on. Stop being lazy. Lazy dog. Um, if you're enjoying the videos, please, please, please hit subscribe, share it around, send it to your friends, hit the like button, do whatever you want to do. All of it helps me out. Leave a comment. Any engagement massively helps me out here on YouTube. Um, if you want to join the Academy for the full reactivity videos, like say the six and a full hour and a half webinar, hit the link in the description, join the Academy. You'll get the first month for free. Um, and I'll see you in there. So question of the day, since I forgot to do one yesterday, I think. Question of the day. Have you ever owned a reactive dog? If so, do you still own a reactive dog? And what is your plan to deal with it?